Well, hello again and welcome. My name is Pastor Steve Ramsey. I serve at Good Hope Lutheran Church in Arlington, Ohio. I also serve at St. John Lutheran Church in Dola, Ohio. A blessed Easter season to you all. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let me read to you from the Gospel of St. John. We are in chapter 20, and this is what it says. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When Jesus had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them, and Jesus said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Well, in this gospel lesson I just read, found in John chapter 20, I would like to look in particular at the very first paragraph. It was Easter Sunday night and the disciples were hiding in fear when Jesus appeared to them and Jesus said, Peace be with you. And then Jesus said, As the Father sent me, so I now send you. Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied among you all in the knowledge of God and of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, among us as Lutherans anyway, the gospel lesson that gets read on the Sunday after Easter is the same every year. Every year, it's the same. On the Sunday after Easter, without fail, we read John chapter 20, which tells us how Jesus appeared to his disciples, proving to them that he was in fact alive and well and risen from the dead. Only Thomas wasn't there that evening, right? The disciple Thomas was absent. He missed out on seeing the risen Lord. And so when the other disciples tell him, guess what, Thomas, Jesus is risen from the dead, he refuses to believe. John chapter 20 tells the famous story of doubting Thomas. And in a world like the one we live in, filled with doubt and disbelief, this is a story that's actually very helpful and very hopeful and very reassuring. Doubt is normal, after all. It is. But Jesus is gentle, and Jesus is patient, and Jesus is not angry. Jesus doesn't give up on Thomas, and what's more, he doesn't give up on us, or on our friends and loved ones who act like they've given up on him. And I'll say that again. Jesus hasn't given up on our loved ones even though they act like they've given up on him. There is hope that they, like Thomas, will come to saving faith too. That's good, that's important, that's very reassuring somehow. But this year I'm going to leave Thomas alone, at least for a little while, and talk about the other disciples instead the ones who were there in that little locked room the first time Jesus appeared. 
because as much as this story is about hope for those who don't believe, it also has a pretty clear message for those of us who do. So, verse 19 in the text. The first thing that happens in the story is that the disciples do indeed come to faith in Jesus. They'd been hiding all right, afraid that they were next in line to be crucified. But then Jesus appears to them. They see his hands and his side, and they believe, which is great. And then, get this, they talked about it. Huh? They talked about it. When Thomas returned later, the disciples used actual words and told him what had happened. This is amazing. So what about you? You've also been met by this Jesus Christ who died and rose again. You also have come to believe, at least I assume so anyway, you're watching this, this channel. So can you find the words and maybe tell someone about it? When and how has Jesus been real in your life? Are there moments that stand out for you? And can you share that story with someone the way the disciples shared their story with Thomas? I really want you to try thinking about this. How might you put your faith into words? So many of us, so many of us spend a lifetime assuming our faith. We spend our lives taking it all for granted somehow. We enter the doors of a church and recite words from a hymnal that somebody else has written but have no words of our own to talk about faith. And honestly, outside of the church, away from Sunday morning, we may never think about faith that much at all. But this is Jesus Christ. This is Jesus who died and rose again to save us. He is Lord of all. When and how have you experienced Jesus as the Lord of your life? Can you find the words and say? What in short is your faith story? And can, can you find a way to share that story with somebody else? Now, if I know all of my Lutheran friends, and I think I do, you're going to struggle with this. You're going to struggle finding the words. Look for them anyway. Think deeply about your faith this week. And then look at the text again because, good news, it shows us there is in fact a way to live and share our faith even if we don't happen to have the right words at the time. We can live and share our faith with our attitude. See verses 19 and 20 in the text where Jesus says, not once, but twice, peace be with you. Peace be with you. To have faith is to live in peace. To know Jesus is to know his peace. And to share Jesus is to share his peace. Words help. Words do matter. But you can live and share your faith by living and sharing his attitude of peace. So what does that mean? Well, if we're constantly worried and constantly afraid, that really doesn't say peace, does it? If we're easily upset by a coworker, or put out by a long line at Walmart, or antagonized by some off-the-wall comment on Facebook, well, that doesn't say peace either. If in our hearts we still make room for greed and envy, pride, disdain, anger, lust, prejudice, hatred, contempt, well, none of that says the peace of Christ is with us. None of that says we belong to Jesus at all. Instead, what that in fact says to the world around us 
is that we're no different from anybody else. And we don't have anything in particular to offer. You may not always have words, but you always have an attitude. Again, you may not always have words, but you always have an attitude. And don't kid yourself. People can tell. You may not always know what to say, but you have thoughts, feelings, opinions, emotions, and believe me, they leak out. They do. We're none of us as good at hiding our inner selves as we like to think. But to be filled with the peace of Jesus Christ, a fearless, joyful hope at all times, a selfless, giving love for all people, well, you know something? An attitude like that leaks out too. It shows, it spreads, it speaks to the world, even when you don't actually have words to say. So question number one, today, those moments that Christ has been active in your life, can you put them into words? Can you try? And question two, even if you can't, put them into words. Can anybody tell you belong to Jesus anyway? What does your attitude say about your faith? And then finally, question number three. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do? We belong to Jesus now. That's wonderful. And we're looking for the right words and we're working on the attitude, okay, but what are we gonna do? What about our everyday actions? You'll notice in the text, Jesus appears to his disciples, bestowing the gift of peace upon their hearts and minds, and then he says, as the Father sent me, so now I send you. There are people in your community, okay, and they're suffering in a hundred different ways and don't pretend you don't know. As the Father sent me, so I now send you. There are charitable causes, things to do with your money besides spending it all on yourself. There are people in your neighborhood and people in your world who are literally dying for lack of a bit of hope, lack of a bit of compassion. As the Father sent me, says Jesus, so now I send you. Whatever is meant by faith, it's not lazy. Whatever is meant by the peace of God, it's not complacent or self-indulgent or lackadaisical. And it does not wait for someone else to go do the right thing. Our faith drives us. It compels us. We go and we do the right thing. We go and we do the loving thing. As the Father sent Jesus, he sends us too. And today's the day. Well, John 20 tells us all about doubting Thomas, all right. And the good news about doubting Thomas is that God has not given up on him. For those who doubt then and now, including our own friends and family members. God is patient and God is gentle and God keeps calling those who don't believe back to this Jesus who died and rose again. But John 20 also makes clear, God keeps calling people who do believe back to Jesus as well. God keeps calling us back to the cross. He calls us back to the empty tomb. And then God sends us out again taking him with us this time, that we may make him known in our words and in our attitudes and in our actions. And may this be the day we get started on all three. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. In our prayers this Lord's Day, we remember the sick and the suffering as well as the rejoicing and all those in need of the mercies of God. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all people according to their needs. 
On this day, Lord Jesus, we remember how you appeared to your disciples after you rose from the dead, and then how you appeared to them a second time just to make sure you included Thomas. You never leave anyone out, Lord. In your mercy, you never omit or overlook anybody. Don't overlook us either, but include us the way you included Thomas. Make yourself known to our hearts and bring us to faith in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray not only for ourselves, but for friends and loved ones who act like they've given up on you. Be merciful to them and to us and extend your hand to them once more today. In the world as it is now, doubt and disbelief are easier and more popular than ever, and the way of faith has never been harder. But nothing is too hard for you. Touch the hearts and minds of people everywhere, including those we love, and bring many to faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Use us, Lord Jesus, as you used your first disciples. Give us words that speak of our faith in you. Then give us the courage to actually speak them. Give us an attitude that reflects the hope we have in you. And let your peace be made known in our lives, even when we have no words. And then, Jesus, show us what to do. In a world that is bleeding from a thousand different wounds, use us to heal at least one of them. And in that way to make you known. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and the suffering, especially those whom we know by name. David and Rich, Dan and Ray, Jan, Cheryl, Emily, Lauren, Jane, Marilyn, We ask that you extend your healing hand to them. Touch their bodies, Lord Jesus. Touch the bodies of all those who cry out to you this day. Work a healing in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Austin and Tina, married this weekend as they begin their new life together as husband and wife. Bless them and those who love them with your Holy Spirit. Lead this couple along the path and make them the family you want them to be. Lord Jesus, work with all of our families and make us the people you long for us to be. Bless husbands and wives and parents and children and let the family unit be the place of peace and love you have always intended. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have led us to the cross, Lord Jesus. Now lead us to the empty tomb. And past the empty tomb, now lead us into your world as your servants of peace. And bring us at last to the fullness of your glory on the day you come again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever.